Um, good morning, everybody. How are you all? Good? Uh, it's fantastic to be here um, for me. It's a real treat um, to have the opportunity to present our, our research to you. It's a real treat to be here and present um, the future of voice. So I've got about 20 minutes to share our research um, and some of our thinking about the future of voice technology. Um, if there's three words that I'd like to take away from this session, I'd quite like it to be these. Voice is power. And I'll share a story with you to try and prove that. So earlier this year, a UK energy company was hacked. But it wasn't hacked using a computer system. It was hacked with a phone call. So the executive of this company, he received a call from what he thought was his boss. And the voice on the phone, it sounded like his boss, the inflection of the voice, the tonality of the voice, it sounded exactly like his boss in Germany. He was told to transfer $250,000 to a Hungarian supplier that he'd never heard of. What did he do? He did it. It was his boss on the phone. But it wasn't his boss on the phone. It was the first ever case of a criminal using artificial intelligence, voice-changing technology in a targeted attack to exploit a business and extort money. One phone call, five minutes, $250,000 exploited, and that money hasn't been recovered. So I mean when I say voice is power. So in the technology industry, we've been investing in voice for, for decades, for a long, long, long time. This isn't actually new for us. But things have accelerated in the last five years. And the reason, primarily, is these products, smart speakers, as Kirill was just talking about. Um, these products, customers are using them to set timers, to listen to music, to uh, interact with voice apps, to, to game with voice, to in, engage with a smart home. So there's tons of applications for these kind of products. And the big technology platform companies are the ones getting involved. So Google, Amazon, Yandex, you name it, they're involved. So unlike five years ago, now we have a, a flood of money coming into the space. And we're, we're seeing breakthroughs every year in AI, in machine learning, breakthroughs in NLP, breakthroughs in conversationality of voice assistants. It's getting better all the time. And if you look at these assistants, they're, I mean, I've, I've picked you know, deliberately black ones, but they're sleek products. They're built to convey this image that they're a high-tech, premium uh, product. Um, not, all, not always. Um, there's some products that maybe don't conform to that. Um, it's a duck. Um, but largely, they do all try and speak as if they are this premium new platform experience. That's the message that these companies want to convey. So how big is that opportunity? Well, that's what we do at Canalis. We track this industry. We track the sales of products around the world. And so far, we've found 194 million smart speakers have been sold. That's up until the end of Q3 this year around the world. Customers have spent 16 billion US dollars with their own money on these. And I'm not even getting into the services layer. This is just on the hardware, which, as we know, is actually quite commoditized. So the growth is still going on. The growth momentum is still here. There are a lot of people now that have smart speakers in their house, but they're buying more and more and more to go in more rooms. Um, there are platform companies that are constantly spinning up new geographies. Um, they're spinning up new languages. There are localized companies that are, that are developing new solutions for voice. So that's why the sale of smart speakers this year worldwide is up 66% versus where it was a year ago. So who are the big fish in this pond? Well, Amazon globally is obviously um, and quite clearly the largest player. I don't think that should surprise any of you. So, so far this year, Amazon has sold almost 22 million smart speakers. It's got a 29% global market volume. And it is way ahead of its closest, its, oh, I should say its main rival, which is Google. So why is Amazon ahead of Google? Well, Amazon beat Google to market by over a year. So Amazon has a big install base of users. That means that 
applications developers have been more likely to develop for Amazon Alexa over Google Assistant for the smart home. That means that third-party speaker companies that make speakers and then they look for a voice partner are more likely to develop that for Amazon rather than Google. So first mover advantage matters in this space. Voice is a platform play, and ecosystem and lock-in really does matter. But that's the story. I, mean, I read a lot of media. I'm sure you do too. This is a story we're often told, that voice globally is this big battle between Amazon and Google. But actually, that's quite an Americanized view. Um, and this year, we've seen Chinese smart speaker companies um, accelerate far, far beyond where they were before. And you can see now three out of the top five smart speaker companies in the world are Chinese. You have Baidu, Tmall, Xiaomi in the top five. This has never happened before. Baidu's even moved above Google. But these companies, as Kirill said, aren't really competing with each other. Um, Amazon and Google exist in their world and their ecosystem, and the Chinese companies exist in an entirely different market. So what we're starting to see is specialized local ecosystems for voice emerging. Um, this has never really happened before. If you think about the big technology categories um, that have come through in the last couple of decades, take smartphone. In the smartphone, you have two main platforms, iOS and Android, and they have a blanket global strategy. It's the same everywhere. In PCs, you have two major platforms. You have Windows and Mac, and they have a blanket global strategy. It's the same everywhere. This is not happening in voice because no one company is big enough to have the range of languages, the range of localized content, the range of localized services that they need to have a truly blanket global strategy. And this is a good thing, I think. I think it's probably a good thing that, that Google and, and Apple and Amazon can't just dominate the entire world. There are local opportunities all over the place. So in Korea, for example, Samsung's Bixby Assistant is actually really popular. Um, in Japan, Clover's Line is really popular. Here in Russia, you have a really um, dynamic, vibrant, emerging voice market with, with Yandex um, leading a lot of the mindshare um, and splitting away from this, this Amazon and Google dominating everything narrative. So what's next for the humble smart speaker? Well, these are smart displays, as, as Kirill was pointing, about, uh, pointing at. We have devices like the Amazon Echo Show. We have the Google Nest Hub. Even Facebook has a device, the Facebook portal. Um, and this is the next evolution of smart speakers. It is uh, a new interface by which your developers can connect with your customers. So you can display content in brand new ways. Um, a lot of people confuse this for a product that's quite like a tablet. It's not like a tablet. Tablets, the primary input is touch, whereas with these devices, most people are using voice as the primary input. So they're very different from tablets. And momentum is already pretty good. You can see in this year alone, almost 20% of the global smart speaker market share is taken up with smart displays. And that's mainly in the US at the moment, but they are slowly coming to other regions. And it does allow vendors to charge more money as well. Typically, a, a smart speaker vendor can charge 46% more for one of these than they can a basic smart speaker. And that's quite important because the basic smart speaker is pretty commoditized. So this is a good revenue opportunity for them. But as we go forwards, it's becoming more and more difficult to think about smart, or think about voice in terms of dedicated hardware like smart speakers and smart displays. If I were to ask, what is the difference between a smart display and a smart TV? Not much. And now to extend that, companies are bringing all kinds of voice-enabled devices to market. So you can buy voice assistants in a toothbrush, in a microwave, in a washing machine, uh, tons and tons of devices coming into play. So it's moving beyond smart speakers and smart displays alone. Voice is becoming this uh, ubiquitous platform that transcends devices. And that also has never really happened before. I mean, typically, I mean, even today, you may have a, a siloed software platform on each of your devices. So you're probably using a different operating system on your phone, as you do on your PC, as is on your TV, as is in your car. It's all a different platform. 
But we're starting to see voice become a single layer through which all of those different platforms can communicate. And the big platform companies, the Googles, Amazon, Yandex, are starting to think about voice in a different way. They're thinking about the position and functionality of voice rather than the device itself. So they're thinking about four major categories, home, roam, travel, and business. And I can step back and, 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 and talk about some more Canalys research because we uh, look at devices across all of these categories. So, so far this year, 75 million smart speakers have been sold. Um, the vast, vast majority of those at this point are going into the home. Um, but that is dwarfed by the Rome opportunity. So if you look at Rome, uh, I've just taken a smartphone example here, but the number of smartphones shipped this year with a voice assistant embedded is 743 million. So a huge opportunity. And now that extends further. A lot of people don't know this, but 16 million vehicles have been sold in the US and Europe that have a voice assistant embedded at shipping. So some companies like Mercedes have their own voice assistant they're trying to put into the car. Other companies are partnering with Apple or Amazon or, um, or Google to bring their voice assistant into the car. So this is extending across different device types. The one area which is, I would say, so far relatively underserved and underrepresented is business. So the technology platform companies are laser focused on this now. They're laser focused on the business opportunity. So I'm going to spend a couple of minutes just talking about business. And throughout the course of today, you've got some fantastic speakers um, that are going to go through some deep dives and use cases in business. I just want the opportunity to frame that for you. So largely, when we think about voice in business, we think about two major categories um, in which you can use voice. The first is internal. So you're thinking about voice inside your organization. That's mainly about efficiency, productivity, and the happiness of your workforce. So there are some pretty neat examples. Um, a company called Core Design Media has done something pretty neat, where they are integrating a voice platform with their BI tool, with their business intelligence tool, MicroStrategy. So that means their executives can now go up to a smart speaker and say, hey, what was my revenue last month? Or, hey, what's my profitability in Germany over the last year? All these quick questions and get quick insights about their own business because it's linked with their business intelligence tool. And then they can take that to presentations or meetings or whatever it is. But historically, to get that information, you'd have to enter a portal on your PC. You'd have to download a CSV file. You'd have to create pivot tables and formulas and pull out the growth rates that way. So this is saving time um, and for executives and making the whole process much more efficient. Uh, another really, really important example of voice in business is in the meeting room. So this is something that Amazon specifically is targeting um, really, really heavily. So Amazon claims that the average office worker loses eight or nine minutes per meeting just setting up a conference call. So the conference hardware, the conference software, um, dialing into that meeting takes a long time. So they're targeting a meeting room as a really specific opportunity. And Brooks Brothers in the US, the clothing, out, clo clothing outlet, has started to bring Alexa into their meeting room so their, their, their employees can just walk into a room and say, Alexa, start the meeting. And instead of having to dial in and configure all the hardware and software themselves, it just works. And finally, uh, just on the internal side, a company called Express LLC, this is a logistics company. Um, they've gone one step further. So we're starting to see companies now develop their own private apps for voice. And that's what Express LLC does. They have trucks that deliver goods all around the United States. Um, and they have a control center. And the workers in that control center now have a voice platform they can use to, to basically dictate the routes the trucks take and to gather data on the trucks um, from that control center. So there are some workloads that make sense to keep on a PC. But the key to this is identifying those quick workloads you can offload using voice and get efficiency that way. The other side of the other pillar of business voice is external use, so interacting with your customers. Um, so efficiency is obviously an important uh, goal on the, on the external side as well. Um, a good example of that would be chatbots and 
customer service agents. In fact, our hosts, Just AI, do a really good job um, in the contact center driving efficiency. Um, and there are a whole bunch of examples of how companies are using voice. One of the main targets for Google and Amazon is hospitality, so hotel rooms. There are lots of companies, hotel companies like Marriott, that are now integrating smart speakers into a hotel room. And that's not just about efficiency. I mean, on the one hand, it is. You can, you can ask questions like, what's the check-in time? What's the check-out time? What time does breakfast start? You can find out information about the local area. Um, but it's also a revenue opportunity. They're able to upsell services, so the smart speaker can talk about paid spa services or room service. Um, and actually, Marriott's been seeing an increase in the average um, revenue per customer when they stay in a room with a smart speaker. So like I said, you've got, you've got a bunch of really, really great speakers talking about use cases and deep dives. I just wanted to frame that for you um, at the outset. So where are we going with voice? Well, Canalis estimates that by the end of this year, there'll be 218 million smart speakers in active use around the world. Most of those, as I said, still in the home. By 2023, that will more than double to 589 million smart speakers. So this is a phenomenal opportunity. Absolutely unbelievable. And the technology platform companies are betting that this is the future. Voice is very, very likely going to be the next app store. That's why Apple and Google are so heavily invested in voice. Voice is very likely to be the next search engine. That's why Yandex, it makes sense for Yandex to be involved in voice. Voice is very likely going to be the next marketplace. That's why Amazon and Alibaba are so, so dependent on their investment in voice. So they're betting on this happening, Voice being the next search engine, the next app store, the next marketplace. This is a mammoth, mammoth opportunity. So if there's three words I'd love you to remember this session by, I'd like it to be these. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much.